Hello everybody, today nothing about controllers or alike or Bitwig, but instead there is a new kit on the block for using plugins and it's a new interface called CLAP and this might replace in the future things like VST, AU and alike. Why do we need this if there are already so many standards out there for integrating plugins into your door? We come to that in a second, but just to get you an idea what this is about. So CLAP stands for Clever Audio Plugin, and it is designed by Alexandre Piquet. I hope I pronounced his name a little bit correctly. And he is one of the developers of Bitwig, but he's also known for several other developer works. For example, he ported all the Linux versions of the UE plugins, and he's also developing the VST Bridge, which allows you to run VST plugins on Linux as well. So he's a real expert as well on, on plugin and interfacing to these plugins and integrating them into the door. So someone who knows what he's talking about. And this is also nothing that comes out of the blue. It's already developed since 2015. It's in the work. So it's a really thought out interface for plugins. It's not yet officially out, but we will see later. You can already use it right now and you can experiment it and see what the benefits are. We come to that in a minute before we do that what are the benefits why do we need another interface so let's first wear the head of a normal user what benefits brings this to you as a music creator first thing it gives you non-destructive polyphonic parameter modulation what the hell does it mean um, if you're a bitwig user you might be familiar with polyphonic parameter modulation which means you can modulate for example your filter cutoff or your envelope differently for each note you play, which is a very powerful feature. But so far this works only with Bitwig plugins, but if you use now the clap integration of a plugin, this works then with every plugin which supports this interface. And additionally, it also gives you information about tempo and timing changes, so stuff for which you currently need the ARA extension for AU and VST plugins. Also fast plugin scanning. If you are a regular door user, you know each and every door takes quite a while to check every time you start it to see if there is anything new in plugins and this takes really long time and some doors even block you from working until the scanning is finished. So this will be much faster because it's not necessary to instantiate the plugin to see what it's capable of because it has a defined plugin metadata description in the file so you don't need to instantiate it, just read the data from the file which is very very fast and also this gives you the information about the organization of these plugins. For example, this plugin metadata can say hello, I'm a delay or I'm a reverb and you can categorize it then in your DAW browser which is very handy and you don't need to make any guessing work. The next feature which I think is the most interesting is that you can discuss between the host and the plugin how to do the multi-threading which is so far simply not possible. So some plugins try to do multi-threading but this collides with the, how the DAW uses it and now they can discuss about this how multi-threading should be done and this is very very, very powerful and Urs Heckmann from Yuhi wrote that they did already benchmarks with their plugins running on clap or not and they say eye-popping results so <laughs> we have to see what this really means but I think this is very very interesting and next feature is also very interesting so resource consolidation because many plugins bring their own resources or you can drag and drop samples in them for them to use but then if you want to somehow consolidate your project uh, for, for backup or anything it's very difficult that you do not miss anything so also now the, this interface allows you that the plugin reports all the, the reference samples etc they use and so the host can store all that together in a project file let's wear for a second the developer's head but don't worry there will be more user stuff coming up in a second but for a second let's wear a developer's head why should developers be interested in clap first thing is it's very liberally licensed it's just under mit license which basically means you can do whatever you want with that if you want to sell it or not make it open source or not only thing is don't bother us with anything uh, just use it and uh, like it because if you follow this 
discussions on developers forums, you know the issues with VST 2 and 3. And I don't want to go into detail. If you are curious about that, you can also check out the caveat of that about the collab discussion. So there is tons of that information in there. Next thing, which is interesting as well, it's not an API, so not an application programming interface, but instead it's binary interface, which means the interfacing is on a binary level and you can basically use any program language which compiles to machine code. And so currently already C and C++ are supported out of the box and there's already from uh, third party users adaptions to the Delphi and for the Rust programming language. Um, so you have more choices for developing your source code. Everything is out in the open on GitHub, so it's no longer for. There are more repositories. If you go here on GitHub, you see all the clap repositories, so the main audio plugin. Uh, there are some example plugins. There is an example host, and there is some helper stuff, and so on and so on. And the most interesting thing for a starter is here the main clap thing. And there's also many, many helpful links to get you started and example code and everything. And I don't want to go into too much detail about that. So much for developers. Maybe I do some additional tutorials. Tell me if you're interested into that. I'm actually not a blocking coder, but nevertheless, I think I could tell you something about it or get an example going. So if you're curious how this works or if you need some support in that, write that down in the comments. But now let's drop the developer's head again and go back to normal users who wants to make music. So what is already there? What can you do with that? As you already saw here in a GitHub repository, there is an example host, which you can also use already for experiments. If you write your own plugin, you can use that for testing, but there is already Bitwig Studio for the two is in a beta. So if you hold the current license of Bitwig Studio, you can already experiment with Bitwig Studio. Also, so Cocos Reaper is planning support, but there is no test version yet available. There are also some example plugins in the GitHub repo, which you can check out for the source code if you're curious about that. And there is a search XT in the nightly build already supports Clap. So we will see about that in a second as well. And Schwa, which you might know, he is one of the developers of Cocos. He already experimented for that, and that's why we actually know that Cocos is also planning to support it. And if you check out Schwarz's repo on GitHub as well, you see that there is an experimental version of a repo running with some experimental Clap plugins, which are already also available as a download if you want to experiment with them. Also, Yui released a first beta version of the his delay plugin, the MFM in version 2.5, which comes with an installation version for a clap version of the plugins, but sadly it's very old, it's from last year, and it's not compatible to the version in Bitwig. So everything's still uh, in a flux and it's not finalized, but it promised that the final release of 2.5 will have full clap support already, and I'm very curious to, to check that out if it's available. Also on the KVR thread, there are much more rumors who's looking into that. So it's not only between Kogos or Yui, it's much more developers who are curious about that and experiment this. And there were also some bigger names in the picture. If you're curious about these rumors, check out here these 42 pages of a KVR discussion here in Yui's forum. And yeah, it goes on and very active thread and very interesting discussion, but you need to be a bit nerdy, I guess, <laughs> to read through all of that. So let's actually look how it works and what it does. So I guess if you have it, you already have installed the for the two beta. Uh, my current version is beta version four. To make this visible, it's not activated currently. You need to manually activate it to show up plugins. There is in these directories on the different OSs you find uh, or you should have a config.json, which you sometimes need to create because it's not there out of the box. So if you go there here on Windows, it's your username app data, which is a hidden directory. So you need to make this visible local Bitwig Studio. There you need to create such a file. You can use any text editor you want, create file 
in lower capital config.json and this file only needs to contain uh, one line which just reads clap colon two that's it and you need to store that in this location and then uh, when you start bitwig it will show now also clap plugins but before that we also need some plugins and for testing as i said you can get here the nightly build of the search xt synthesizer which you should have anyway because it's a really really great synthesizer coming for totally free and there's all the different builds and for windows i got here the plugin ins only one and if you open in this zip file you find here all the stuff and there you need just the two clap plugins so it's one for the synthesizer and one for the effect section which you can also use via this clap interface where do you need to put this? Maybe if you know where the VST3 plugins are stored here on Windows, it's in program files, common files. There is a VST3 folder with your VST3 devices. And on the same level, there should be, or you can create it, there is this clap folder, and there you can put your clap files which normally will be in the future will be done by your installation program so you don't have to know this but now currently you need to copy that manual so and there i just dropped these two clap devices and there is mfm but as i said it's not compatible so this is not working and this is a plugin by schwa which i also put in there for test purposes that's about it and we can check this out. So let's open up Bitwig and if you did everything correctly with this config.json and put the clap plugins in the right directory, then you should see here if you go to everything, everything, you will see now here's a new category in your plugin file type. You see the clap plugin Intel 64 bit and it shows up the two experimental schwa things the search xt uh, instrument as well as effects and let's go for the full blown version here and you will see this looks like the normal version as well and we can play it uh, maybe let's get a more interesting patch what do we have so this works nicely. So it's really fully usable already now and you can experiment with that. I did not compare now any runtime stuff, if it's faster or not, I don't know. It's up to you and I would like to see your experiences as well. If you check out the modulation and all that stuff and see what it does for you and it's now ready there to use with this beta version. This is really promising clap, especially when now Yuhi will port all their plugins to clap. I use mainly UE plugins because I really like their instruments and all as well as their devices and you saw all the benefits and I like to know what you think about it down in the comments and tell me and make some funky music.